it out some stuff. So yes, yes. absolutely. So I think this is a good transition to actually hear more about EFT. Um, can you give us a brief intro about this modality and how you use it to treat trauma? Mm-hmm. So with EFT, I actually uh, dipped out of the therapy world for a moment um, because it's not within our umbrella. So I'm certified in, I guess it's called energy psychology over okay. there. Um, and, you know, um, what EFT essentially is, is emotional freedom, right? But it's basically acupressure okay. um, with no needles. So you're tapping on different, what they call meridians. I call them en- energy points just so people can understand it a little bit better. Um, in the body that lock in stress okay. or trauma, right? So we're literally tapping on different parts of our body. Um, creating the flow because what happens is sometimes when things happen we get stuck we get tense and that energy if it doesn't if you don't process it it won't go anywhere it'll mm-hmm. just stay there right the clenching of the teeth the earrings and the uh, shoulders yeah um, gut issues all of that all of those things so what we do is we focus on pain points um, specific to traumatic events mm-hmm. uh, and we tap through whatever is coming up so as you're talking about the experience and sometimes you don't even have to talk depending on what we're working through um you're also literally like processing it in your body and whatever is coming up for you it's flowing through you Mm -hmm. um so that's a little bit about the modality it for for trauma what i would do is i wouldn't go back to the 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 trauma first Yes. especially if I don't know the person mm-hmm. like if we're still learning each other and all of the things first of all we're going to resource and just make sure like your your tool basket is your toolbox is good before we right. even work that they're nice and prepared for it exactly yeah. exactly and then we start with just like stable uh, stabilizing um where they are now like let's just get you functioning in life um, what's your biggest pain point right now? And typically once we talk about the in the moment pain point, then we get to pu- pull back the layers of the onion right. and then we'll get to the root. Um, but it's a lot of like relational work um, and things of that nature before we get to the trauma. So I try to create a safe space right. um, because typically the people that I work with already have trust issues and mm-hmm. I don't want to be a part of that. Yeah. That, uh, that pile. Yeah. So similar to um, EMDR requires a lot of preparation before we get into it. And any um, responsible trauma therapist doesn't necessarily start talking about the thing. Mm -hmm. (laughs) We we know that that can be more um, aggravating, more um, disturbing, cause more issues if we go for the jugular. Sometimes I don't know about for you, but sometimes clients get a little frustrated. Like, well, why are we talking about it? They, they want to. It's like that trauma pool. Like, I want to, I want to talk. I want to talk. I want you to hear my story, right? Yeah, I get that a lot. And it's not that we're not trying to hear it, but we're aware that there needs to be a care practice that can help you tolerate re-experiencing or re-talking about it. So with EMDR, it stands for eye movement, desensitization, and reprocessing. It's a lot of words that just describe what the process can look like. So it uses eye movements going back and forth. And our goal is to desensitize whatever disturbances you have related to a past event. Mm-hmm. And the R is reprocessing. So we're going, we're going back there. But similar to um, EFT and tapping is that you don't necessarily have to talk about it. So it looks a lot different and it feels a lot different than traditional talk therapy because you're moving, you're doing Mm -hmm. it. Yeah. It is a brain-based type of therapy. It believes that your brain has the ability to create new connections. Mm -hmm. And we know the brain and the body, you know, you're using the meridians, the energy, we're actually using your nervous system um, because that's where folks, you know, like, oh, when I think about that thing, my stomach hurts or I'm having a flashback, I'm right there. 
we know that a lot of lived experiences are through the body, not necessarily the brain, but they're mm-hmm. one. So mm-hmm. it really helps with aligning the system so that whatever's trapped in our brain or I'm sorry, our bodies, we can move through it in that healing feel real. Now, um, it, like I said, it looks different because the therapists, we're not talking as much. Nope. <laughs> so clients are used to saying something and we're like, okay, you know, making some connection. We mm-hmm. don't do that in EMDR because we believe you have the ability to come up with your own um, information, your own solutions, mm-hmm. because your body and your yeah. brain are designed to care for you. Yes. Yes. It's to build that trust. Yeah. Yep. Our, our job is to get you grounded. So that you can start to align with what you already have embedded in you, right? It's just like clouded with the trauma. Yeah. Um, And so those preparation phases um, with EMDR's eight phases that we work through. So there's the history taking, there's the preparation, the resourcing. When we call it resourcing, it's like coping skills, self-care practices that we want to make sure that you know how to do. Uh When it gets real, you know, I only see you for a certain amount of time per week. You got to be able to take care of yourself the rest of those hours. So that preparation, although it may feel a little frustrating and we're not just going there, are really critical to your um, your treatment, being able to tolerate it when we actually start reprocessing. So you're doing stuff, uh, your eye for um, EMDR, it's. Um, eye movement, but it, it could also be touch or sound. So the ultimate mm-hmm. goal is that uh, we're activating your right hemisphere and the left hemisphere of the brain so that they can communicate mm-hmm. and the eyes, you know, connect to the brain. Mm-hmm. And so we believe we can create that, um, that natural process that your brain uses for processing. It actually does it when you're asleep during your REM sleep, which is rapid eye movement, but we can do it while you're awake. You know, people say sleep on it. You may feel different. Mm-hmm. Your brain has had time to, to mm-hmm. it. Well, we That's do good. that when you're awake, mm-hmm. uh, but it looks different and it will feel yeah. different because your eyes are going back and forth as you're thinking about that negative experience and how you felt about it. But it's also touch. So the one I really like is um, the butterfly hug. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it can be used for adults and children. It's super effective. But then there's also sound that has like sound tones that um, transfer from different ears. You can also march, you know, right, left. So it's kind of like a workout. That's cool. That's really tired (laughs) uh, when they do this. But you can feel the the benefits of uh, relief almost immediately. That's cool. I've never um, heard about the sound one. I've actually done EMDR like as a client. So mm-hmm. I, I've done the eye and the tapping. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't know that you could do the sound or the marching. That's really cool. Yeah, there's a bunch of different ways and it's been adapted over time too. Mm-hmm. You know, um, the the butterfly hug is the most like culturally responsive one. Mm-hmm. People uh, tend to really, I, I like it. And um, for you, did you, for us to become certified, they require that we experience EMDR. Is it the same thing for EFT? Yep. We had to do our own work um, with a, another EFT practitioner. Um, so I got to experience it on the opposite end. I've, I've done it within my certification. Right. And then also there was a time in my life where I was like, I need to tap some stuff mm-hmm. out. Um, and I did it again. So um, it is a really powerful powerful experience sitting on both sides of the screen right, right? right. Where, okay like I really feel like my suds level go down or my subjective units of distress right I might be on a 10 yeah. and then like I'm at a zero and then I stay there like that event is not distressing anymore moving mm-hmm. forward, right so it's just a memory it's ultimately just a memory. You know, Mm -hmm. and just like, oh, I remember when I was 10 years old. I actually don't remember when I was 10. I remember when I was eight years old and I did, right? It can become that even your distressing memories of your greatest challenges can become memories that Mm -hmm. don't live in your body and the mind the way that they used to. 
Exactly. We don't erase memories. We don't no. make you forget it ever happened, mm -hmm. but we can help you get some relief and how much it's had a hold on you. Mm -hmm. And we're both these in the body, essentially. But yep. there's a lot of wisdom in our so body. Much. So much. The body is so wise. Um, and even with EFT, I think it is the same with EMDR, but you can speak to this, is that memories, new memories will create over oh, the time. Yeah. Or, yeah. So like I'll be tapping and somebody's like, I don't even remember everything that happened. I'm like, it's okay. You don't have to. Yeah. And then as we're tapping, oh, this one thing happened or this. And I'm like, oh, really? Okay. Do you want to add that into the story or do you want to add that yeah. into our work? Yeah. Right. And it might be something that is, that is hard to remember or, you know, something that is distressing. But what I've noticed too, is that um, some of the memories are very like warming, like, oh, I yes. didn't remember this. Like, oh, okay, that did happen. And that was so cool. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a beautiful part of the experience too, is like being able to create or bring up um, past memories that might've been suppressed. Right. For, for us, they call it memory consolidation. Mm -hmm. but it starts coming together that things that you might have forgotten that the brain has kind of kicked out is unimportant when you're no longer in an activated state you can see the whole picture yep when exactly. you're in a traumatic state you're kind of um tunnel vision on the event when there might have been other things happening around it and what that means to your system to see the whole picture rather than a part of it mm-hmm and uh, there are some clients that I've been able to see if they're, as they're doing their butterfly hug, that they're in a room that used to cause them a lot of stress. Mm -hmm. Now they see the window and they notice that it's sunny outside and there's birds chirping and mm -hmm. the sky is blue and they really like that window. Mm -hmm. And now the whole room is lighter. Yes. That um, the picture can can change for people even in a negative experiences that feel better for their system. That's, and it's still accurate and make it up. Sometimes there's parts of it that you get to kind of remix and um, put a new spin on it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sometimes mm -hmm. like, well, I'm walking, I see myself walking down the street. Mm -hmm. I'm no longer where I was at. And I'm happy to be going home. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It provides a lot of clarity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. But the funkiness don't live in your system anymore. That's all we're trying to do is get rid of the disturbance. And Lucretia alluded to what we measure is how disturbed a person is. Mm -hmm. That it ranges from zero to being like neutral or nothing. Mm -hmm. Like the most disturbed distress I could feel. And to see folks be able to move down on that scale. It's Sometimes they move up. You know, they start yeah. place and it goes up. Mm -hmm. um, but to see folks create movement that feels better, healthier, more manageable mm -hmm. is is the ultimate goal is that it's not taking over your life anymore. Yeah. And I love what you said about, you know, sometimes it does go up um, because that might be like a myth that people think like it's just supposed to go down and that's the process. And it's like, nah, sometimes it will spike up based on what we're talking about or based on what comes up. And, you know, our role as therapists is to create the safe space for when things do go up, right? Mm -hmm. You don't have to be in it by yourself. And there's a container for that where it's like, okay, it did go up. Do you need to be grounded or can you sit mm -hmm. with this? Are you in your window of tolerance? Like, can you manage this? Yeah, where are you um, at? So where, are you at? where are you at right now? Because you can see folks kind of dissociate and check out and become numb because that's their tra trauma response. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Exactly. I'm like, are you with me? Mm -hmm. Where you at? Come Open your me. eyes. <laughs> right. And that's the benefit of having a professional support is that we're always checking in with you mm -hmm. and you're not doing it alone. Yeah. Yeah. Even even when you don't notice it yourself, sometimes I can be on, I'll click on the screen and I'm like, oh, today's a day, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> nothing is even said. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just follow and following your process. Mm -hmm. Being able to follow people's processes as a trauma therapist is so powerful. Who would you say is best suited for EFT? Yes, for EFT, I would say um, you apparently you can use EFT for a lot of different things, right? In that in that field, so 
Um, a lot of people use it for like cravings or um, addiction issues, money management issues, things like